attention on me. On me. Is anybody with me? Say the preach. Who with me? Louis V. Lean to the team. Oh, I'm clean. You already know who it is, man. It's your boy, Poor Boy, sending a poll. Don't stand for poll. You're going to want to pay very close attention to what I'm about to speak about before you guys start your journey on NBA 2K20 next week on Thursday. As well as I want to say, the game will release at 9 p.m. Pacific and midnight Eastern on Thursday night. Just to throw that out there for everybody that has been wondering uh, what's going to be the official time for NBA 2K20 to release. 9 p.m. PST, uh, midnight Eastern. Um, I don't know about EU and everywhere else in the world, but let's jump right into it. Mike Wayne took to Twitter today to talk more in depth about grinding from 95 to 99 overall. So let's jump right into it. He says, some details on the 95 to 99 end game of NBA 2K20. You level up or down based on wins and losses and on-court performance. Not teammate grade. It's a new evaluation system that's more stat-based like takeover. Wins are more heavily weighted in park, and pro and wide performance is more heavily weighted in my career. Every time you go up a level, you get plus one to all of your attributes for free. No VC required, but you can lose them if your overall drops. You will never drop below 95 overall once you get there, and you can move between overalls relatively quickly. We didn't want it to be a grind, but more of an indication of skill. The plus one to plus four is on top of the caps you set in the builder. That's why the highest ratings max out at 95 overall. We also factor in strength of an opponent so you'll move up faster for beating higher overalls. And yes, you can drop from 99 back to 98 overall. So let's talk about that real quickly, y'all. Because in a sense, what he's saying, and I'm gonna ask him about this later on today on Twitter, is that when we hit 95 overall we max out on all of our attributes now of course some of us aren't going to have 95 and three-point shooting 95 and rebounding but for example if i have 95 ball control after i reach 95 overall from then on out each overall uh rep up i receive i will receive plus one to that 95 ball control and by the time i hit 99 overall i will have 99 ball control so that is a bomb that changes a lot of things especially when it comes to creating your build especially when full game releases to remember that even though you might cap out at 95 on something by the time you hit 95 overall you can go well over that cap now he did say like i said the upgrades will not cost any vc and let's take a step back and talk about my career being based on performance and park and pro am being based off of wins and who you play against now if you guys don't quite understand what he means by performance in my career i don't believe that you're going to have to manipulate just one move all game to get your overall up in my career i, I think it's reverting back to where you can go into my career go for a triple double and that will help boost your overall now, in my career in Pro-Am, it's going to be based off of wins and then who you play against as well as stats. But at the same time, you're not going to want to lose at all in Park and Pro-Am because it's going to be harder to rep up. Now, in my career, it's not going to be about wins and losses, of course, because you're playing against bots. It's going to be about your performance. So if you're playing my career to get your overall up, you're probably going to want to go for like them 200 point games. You know what I'm saying? Try and go for some triple double games. I don't know what performance is going to be based off of gaining your overall in my career, but I'm pretty sure it won't be based off of just doing one move and one, you know what I'm saying, method all game to receive, you know what I'm saying, and grind out your overall in my career. Now, I do like that my park and pro am repping up is based off of your wins and your losses. I do like that because, of course, by the time you hit 95, between 95 and 99, you can't lose too many games or you're going to dump back down. Now, he did confirm that you can dump back down um, from 99 to 98 overall, as well as after you hit 95 overall, you can't dump back down past 95 overall. So you can go from 95 back to 94 overall to clear the air out there. As well as somebody took the Twitter to ask Mike, he said, hey, Mike, I just want to ask, is losing overall for not playing really a thing? What about for the people that go to school and work? In my opinion, it's not fair to lose overall for not being able to play. 
Mike Wayne said it's not a thing. Your rating can only drop based on how you play. So officially clear the air out there. You will not drop in overall just because you don't play. You will only drop in overall if you lose too many games. Now, somebody else took to Twitter and they said, do you think the average player who doesn't have a ton, a ton of time to play the game will be able to get their player to higher overalls this year, 95 plus. Mike Wayne said time shouldn't be the limiting factor, but skill might be. If they're always losing and putting up bad stats, they will have a hard time getting above 96 overall. So pretty much what that's even saying as well as if you're a stretch big taking a lot of bad shots and you going like three for nine in some games, it will be tough to wrap up. Now, if you're going like 100% from the field and winning comp games, you're going to wrap up real fast. He already confirmed that it only takes 10 to 15 wins in the park to go from 95 to 96 overall. So we'll see how that plays out when full game releases. Let's jump into some stretch big news. Some new stretch bigs are going to want to know about, um, about the cutoff height um, for slower release speed. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to those those power forwards and those centers builds. Now somebody said, hey Mike, have you guys decided on what the cutoff height for slower release speed should be? Mike Wayne responding, he says 610. So if you make a build over 610, your release speed will decrease by default. So you guys might want to be aware of that, especially if you're planning on making a 611 stretch big. Keep in mind, if you make a 611 stretch big, you will have a slower release speed than a 610 stretch big. So keep that in mind, y'all. Let's jump on to talking about flexible release. Somebody asked Mike, they said, does flexible release help you get more greens? Now, a lot of people keep asking about flexible release and steady shooter. One of the two badges that everybody is so skeptical about using. Mike Wayne responds, he says, no, it won't, but it will help you make more whites. Now, I've been telling people on my videos that flexible release is going to be a good badge. Um, if I have enough badge upgrades, I plan on using this badge because I don't plan on having a very high three point in mid range shooting when I make my build in 2K20. Now, slashers, open up your ears. We got some news. Somebody took the Twitter to ask about the slashers out there. He said, what badge would you recommend for slashers to reduce the chance of losing the ball while attempting a layup or dunk against someone spamming square to strip it? Mike Wayne responded and he said, unpluckable, slithery finisher, and fancy footwork is three badges that slashers must have. So slashers out there, unpluckable, slithery finisher, and fancy footwork. Make sure you got them badges in your pocket. Now let's quickly talk about Giant Slayer more in depth. I haven't seen Mike Wayne talk about Giant Slayer like this before. Um, I don't know if you guys have either, but somebody took the Twitter and they asked Mike Wayne, will Giant Slayer help smaller centers against taller ones or is it mostly for guards? Mike Wayne responded, he said, it kicks into effect for any defender that's at least an inch taller than you, but has a tiny effect when they're that close in height. To get the full advantage of the badge, you need at least a six inch difference. So for everybody out there that plans on using Giant Slayer, he pretty much answered his question without, you know what I'm saying? Cause the dude asked the question and he pretty much yeah. answered it himself. And then Mike Wayne went on ahead and answered on top of that. It really only works for guards, you feel me? So if there's a if there's a seven foot power forward trying to dunk on a seven foot one center, it's really not gonna make that big of a difference or take that much of effect, you feel me? Um, let's talk about quick draw real quick. A lot of people are mad about quick draw. A lot of people want this badge gone. Um, somebody asked Mike, they said, Mike, I have a question on the quick draw badge. If I use Curry's release without the badge, will it be at the same speed as normal? Or do I need to get bronze quick draw to have Curry's normal release speed? This probably sounds like a dumb question, but please let me know. Now, it wasn't a dumb question, Danny, but Mike Wayne responded and he said to shoot just like Curry, you would need his shot plus his badge level. I think he's either gold or Hall of Fame quick draw. Now, we all know Curry is Hall of Fame quick draw. I don't even know why Mike tried to play like that. I would be very surprised if he has gold quick draw. What y'all think? I think Curry has Hall of Fame quick draw. You feel me? Now, let's move on to talking about Dimer and Floor General. Um, a lot of people have been wondering if Dimer and Floor General stacks. So somebody asked Mike on Twitter. They said, if I have Floor General and Hall of Fame and I hit my teammate with Hall of Fame Dimer, would they get the plus four boost? from both badges to make it plus eight. 
Mike Wayne said those aren't the numbers, but yes, both badges would take effect. So yes, Dimer and Floor General Stacks. Um, I don't know the correct attribute boost number to Dimer, or even if it gives an attribute boost, but I know it gives a shot percentage boost. Now that is good to know for all the playmakers out there that was undecided on picking up Dimer or Floor General or both at the same time. I do plan on picking up one of the two or both badges, you know what I'm saying, to help boost my teammates. But let's jump into talking about some dribbling right quick, and then we're going to jump off of this video, y'all. I didn't want to keep you guys too long. So let's talk about dribble escapes right quick. Now, if you guys did not know, dribble escape used to be turbo right stick down on 2K19. Now on 2K20, it's turbo left stick down, and it's very unresponsive on the left stick. I would rather have it back on the right stick. It's not too much of a change. It isn't even a skill gap. It's a simple move. And a lot of people tried to give me heat for asking Mike Wayne for the change. So I took the Twitter the one night, you know what I'm saying, before I went to sleep. I didn't even think Mike Wayne would even respond to this. You know what I'm saying? I was even hoping for him to reply and say no and give me details on why he's saying no, it can't be changed. But he actually responded and said, yeah. So I took the Twitter and I said, I don't know if this is possible, but I definitely would like dribble escape back on the right stick than trying to trigger it with the left stick. It seems to not register correctly all the time when attempting to do on the left stick. Maybe I suck though, yeah. I, when I was sending this tweet out, I was like, yeah, I, I, I must suck. Some people might be able to spam, you know what I'm saying, step back on 2K20 and 2KU. But I was surprised at how, how many people actually agree with me. Now, I was asleep when Mike Wayne responded. As you can see, he responded at 8 in the morning. He said, are you talking about the standing step backs that were sprint right stick down last year? I woke up and I was like, yeah. But I didn't see that. He actually responded and he said, it's too late to get this in for day one. He said, but I'll patch it. Yeah, he said, he go patch that for your boy. So he said, but I'll patch it. Turbo right stick down would be the step back escape and right, uh, turbo right stick down left away from ball hand will be the behind the back rap escape. And that was just a whole dub for me, you feel me? Uh, let me know down in the comment section if you have problems doing dribble escape with the left stick. I'm glad I actually asked about it. I never wanted to ask Mike Wayne for anything for my own personal benefit, even though I know there's players out there that don't like it on the left stick. So I went and I ran a, a poll for it because it was players out there tagging me, and I know none of these players dribble, but it was players out there tagging me, talking about you suck, get used to it, uh, you're not calm, blah, blah, blah. So I said vote. People think I ask for my own benefit when multiple players day in, day out tag me and complain about it. Even top dribblers don't like it, so vote. I said dribble escape stays left, dribble escape goes right. Now only 2,500 people voted on this poll, but 80% said they wanted to go back right. So technically, I wasn't asked for my own personal benefit. I was speaking for a lot of players that don't have a big voice in the community. And I'm glad I did because a lot of people hit me up after this and they were like, thank you. Thank you for hitting Mike up about this. Poor boy, you saved dribbling. You know what I'm saying? I'm just glad that uh, I asked. I wasn't trying to ask for my own personal benefit because I already know a lot of players didn't like it. But I'm glad I asked. So... If you happy that dribble escape is going back to the right stick from the left stick, you know what I'm saying? Let me get a thank you poor boy down in the comment section. I hope you guys appreciate this video, this info. I didn't want to keep you guys too long, but I did want to bring you up to date on some new news from my guy, Mike Wayne. And I'm going to catch up with you guys on the next video. Stay blessed whenever you watch this. Y'all be easy. I'm out one. Swag, tell me who the culprit Who did it? Think you cop the latest, I already wore it yeah. I did If I'm who she looking past, then she who I forget Yeah, go white flag, I ain't tryna forfeit No way, you still in swag, tell me